Hello and welcome. In this video, we'll take a look at how you can compute uh, how much your savings will be worth uh, when you retire. So just to come up with a simple example, uh, let's say, uh, let's take a five year time horizon. So you say you have year and you have savings. And let's say you have year one, two, three, four, and five, and you are saving say $2,000 every year. So I'm just gonna copy this. Now, our goal is to find out if you're going to save this at an interest rate of, let's say 5%, you put it in the bank and they give you 5%. Um, if you save it at that at that rate, how much will you have at the end of the five year period? So let's uh, take a small detour and try to understand how this interest works. $2,000 and let's say you are earning interest at the rate of 5% for one year. So then what happens is you get paid you're at the end of the one year you have your 2000 and you have your interest on the 2000 which is 2000 times 5% so that can be written as uh, 2000 times 1 plus your interest rate you can write it like that so let's take this concept over here and I'm going to use this concept in the fourth year. So at the end of the fourth year, you have, you're putting $2,000 in your bank. So now that is going to be worth, at the end of the fifth year, it's going to be worth your initial money times, uh, sorry, times one plus your interest rate. And so it's going to be worth $2,100. Now you can do the same thing for the third year. So the third year amount is going to be worth uh, 2000 times uh, 1 plus the interest rate times 1 plus interest rate and that's the reason is because um, your third year $2000 is going to be worth you know using the same uh, logic as the, the as the fourth year is going to be worth um, 2100 in the fourth year but that's going to earn one more year of interest in the fifth year so you have to multiply this interest uh, factor 1 plus B1, you want to multiply it twice. Uh, instead of that, you can just say 1 plus B1 raised to the power 2. You can say that. And so on. And here you can say 1 plus B1 raised to the power 3 and so on. So we, we you know, so, so rather than type all these formulas by hand, what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try something a little clever. So which is I'm going to say B1 um, times 1 plus interest rate raised to the power, I'm going to just subtract uh, the highest number minus the current number. So E5 minus E9, and that's going to give me four automatically, and that's going to give me the correct value. And I would like to also just drag and drop this formula all the way to the other cells. To do that, I need to edit the formula. I need to make the B1 as $B, $1. I'm just going to press F4 to do that. And now as I drag the formula down, the B1 is not going to change. Um, and I also need to change uh, E9 to E$9, so that also doesn't change. So I'm going to hit enter, and now I'm ready to drag this formula all the way down. So when I do that, uh, what happens is every uh, in every um, year, the, the power of the uh, you know, one plus interest rate changes appropriately um, so as to give the correct future value. And I can just add these uh, future values over here like this to get my total future value now there is a, another shortcut to do this I can instead of doing this uh, you know step by step calculations I can just use a future value function so the, it's f f v equals f v and I have to give the rate the rate is my interest rate the number of periods here is five so I'm going to say five and your payment is okay whatever is the constant amount that you're paying every month uh, i mean every period in this case every year and by the way this constant payment is called an annuity okay so this annuity in our case is 2000 uh, actually i just put the cell number here that's our annuity and you can hit close the parenthesis and hit enter 
and you're going to get the same figure but you're going to get a different um, sign here you're going to see these red parentheses that indicates that it's a negative number and the reason it's a negative number is that it has a different direction of flow than the original cash flow so the original cash flow is the savings that you're putting into the bank and the final cash flow excuse me is the savings that you, is the money that you're getting out of the bank so that's why if this is positive then this is negative or if you want to make the initial cash flow is negative then the final cash flow is going to be positive so we'll just leave it as positive for now and uh, another thing i want to point out here is now if you see if you look at the formula itself it has uh, two other um, options that we have not selected the first is a present value pv stands for present value and type stands for uh, whether these payments are being paid out in the start of the year or the end of the year and that makes a huge difference if it's paid out at the start of the year then that accrues much more interest than if it is uh, deposited into the bank at the end of the year so um, we'll play around with both these options so let's say you have a present value of now what is the significance of the present value present value basically means that you have some initial savings so let's say you have an initial savings of three thousand dollars which you already have and then you decide to you know you and then you're earning your salary and then you're going to save out of that uh the two thousand dollars so then you can put your initial value here you can say comma and you can just put your initial value like this and then that gives you the total amount um so the initial value of course is equivalent to uh putting your you know that three thousand amount over here at, at the zeroth position so i could just put a three thousand here and uh, i could in fact just extend this formula like this and if i find the sum of that then that gives me 14,880, which is exactly the same as this. And finally, the next thing I would like to show you is your future value, uh, is your type. So uh, by default, it's going to choose a type zero, which means you're making these deposits at the end of the period. But what if you make it at the beginning of the period, then you will obviously incru, uh, you will obviously earn a higher interest rate because you're depositing the money earlier into the bank. So I'm going to say one and then you will see now that the amount that you will get back at the end of the fifth year is slightly higher. Now, how do you translate this to your um, savings? So now, supposing you have, let's say you have $3,000 to begin with. And so what you can do is you can say FE and your rate is, let's say 5%. Let's keep it as 5%. And now let's uh, say you're saving this money not on a annual basis but on a monthly basis well then you have to divide your interest rate by 12 because typically these interest rates are mentioned as annual interest rates so if you're going to do a monthly calculation then you have to divide the annual interest rate by 12 and then you have to cal calculate the number of periods so each uh, year has 12 months and let's say you're working for 40 years so 12 times 40 would be the number of periods and your payment let's say you're saving a thousand dollars every uh, month and your present value we can just leave you know we can leave these two um, blank and if you do that so you're earning five percent interest rate per annum per year and you're saving for 40 years and you're putting thousand dollars every month of those 40 years if that's what you're doing to save then i'm going to hit enter and yeah so your savings are then 1.5 million dollars so that's right if you just saved a thousand dollars every month for 40 years then you're going to make a uh, 1.5 million dollars you're going to have 1.5 million dollars when you retire just to give you an idea how much of an interest you're earning let's just do one thing let's say you take a thousand dollars multiply it by 12 for 12 months and multiply it by 40 so if all you did was keep that money in you know uh, in your mattress under your mattress then you're going to get four four eighty thousand dollars so um so the difference between these two is uh a million dollars so if you just earned five percent interest rate then you're going to earn a million dollars in interest on that four eighty thousand thanks for watching and have a wonderful time